Uh, he is the CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Invesco AMC, India Operations. What is Invesco? Invesco is amongst the top uh, 15 uh, multinational corporation existing in the world of investment, operating since 2002. That is one of the reasons we are here today. Whatever we can gather from you, we'd like to. Prior to, I want to throw some light on that. Uh, I think that uh, there's a slight difference uh, in, in uh, what we are trying to achieve. Uh, today, the majority of that is basically investment products. Right. And risk for, so I think uh, somewhere there is an overlap, hmm. unfortunately, in the Indian markets. Hmm. But uh, uh, I think the maximum number of investors would have come in that 2007-8 period yes. at that point of time. Yeah. And obviously, that was like a peak of the market. 2003 you, to 2008 bull run. Hello and welcome everyone to AUM Finance Podcast. This podcast discusses the first principles of investing and is for informational purpose only. We intend to add to the body of knowledge. Please consult your financial advisor before taking any investing decision. Hi there. Uh, welcome to the interview section of the AUM Finance Podcast. As I keep telling, the interview section is a section where I get to interview the cream, the la cream. Uh, of the financial services world and I get to pick their brain so that we can add to the knowledge bank. Now you would be wondering who, which luminary I have today. So let me introduce our guest. We have Mr. Saurabh Nanavati. Uh, he is the CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Invesco AMC, India Operations. What is Invesco? Invesco is amongst the top uh, 15 uh, multinational corporation existing in the world of investment. Uh, it is the 13th biggest investment company in the world and one of which is in uh, India. Uh, Saurabh, you, uh, your educational background is you, you are an electronics engineer and an MBA from Jamnalal Bajaj, Bombay. You are a veteran of the mutual fund industry. You have been operating since 2002. That is one of the reasons we are here today. Whatever we can gather from you, we'd like to. Prior to uh, uh, working and prior to being the CEO of Invesco, you were a chief investment officer of HDFC Standard Life Insurance. So one of the rare uh, talent which has worked both in the insurance industry and the mutual fund industry. Uh, before that, you were with Deutsche AMC, if I'm pronouncing it right. And you've also been Amphi Director, Association of Mutual Funds of India Director. You've been a Vice Chairman. You are a Director right now. Yeah. And you've been a Vice Chairman. So, uh, pleasure. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. And I am sure the young ones out there, uh, and even the adults, are going to benefit a lot from this podcast. Thanks, Neera. Pleasure. Uh, so, Saurabh, let me ask you the first question. You are a veteran, as I said, in the mutual fund industry. Please come. And you worked couple of years, uh, probably a decade in life insurance also. No, life insurance was a shorter stint, was shorter just for stint. two years. Yeah. Oh, just for two years. But somebody, a brain like you in two years can gather the knowledge of 20. <laughs> Please compare the two industry, the two products, the two industry, you want to throw some light on that. Uh, I think that uh, there's a slight difference uh, in, in uh, what we are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, so globally, Asset management industry uh, is responsible for managing a portfolio and generating returns. Mm. And uh, insurance is primarily taken for risk. Okay. Uh, and that's in, I think, you know, all across the world. Insurance for risk? Insurance for risk and, and um, uh, you know, mm. asset management for returns. Okay. I think in India that has, uh, you know, been tweaked. Uh, been tweaked in a way where okay. insurance companies position themselves not only for risk but also for investments. Okay. Uh, now that's where I basically see, uh, you know, uh, a huge contradiction. Mm. Uh, if 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 you basically see uh, the uh, the portfolio how it's constructed uh, for life insurance companies mm. today, the majority of that is basically investment products. Right. And risk forms a very small part Portion of of of, yes. of uh, this thing, which the is term not insurance not plan is not as much sold exactly as the investment come insurance plans. Uh, 
So I think there's a huge opportunity for newcomers for disruption in that space. Okay. Uh, I think we are already seeing the first signs of it in general insurance. Okay. But uh, you know, ideally speaking, uh, any insurance company should have the majority of their portion in term insurance or or uh, general insurance products, which is pure risk, mm. and and not investments. Right. Uh, I think the way the returns are also compared uh, is not apple to apple. Yes. Uh, mutual funds clearly, when we talk about NAVs and returns, uh, that is factored in your NAV takes care of all your expenses. Right. Uh, in insurance, hmm. expenses are separate. Hmm. So what tends to happen is in a ULIP plan, you may get allotted 10,000 units. Yeah. But over a period of time, uh, every month, every year, depending on what the costs are, hmm. those units keep on declining uh, because hmm. th uh, that is oh, what yeah. they recover. Oh. Uh, wow. So at the end of the period, uh, you may suddenly find that, oh, I don't have 10,000 units, I have 9,500 units. So they have freeze the NAV, but they have declined, they are reducing. Imagine that happening in mutual fund. Exactly. NAV. So uh, I don't think it's a correct comparison when, when the returns are shown. Okay. Uh, because it's not like to like. Right. In our case, right. in mutual fund industry, uh, the units will remain constant. Right. It will never go then down. Then it will never reduce uh, by uh, even a single unit. Exactly. Huh. Uh, whereas in, in, uh, in any ULIP plan, Hmm. By the time you redeem it, hmm. it will be significantly lower. Oh, that's and, wonderful. And that's where I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the difference is in terms of the market structure in India, hmm. where, uh, you know, we have very large operations, uh, you know, youth sales teams, youth sales forces, hmm. but the focus is more on investments rather than risk. Hmm. So I, I clearly feel the insurance industry is set up for disruption at some point of time. So, if a new, if you have to set up an insurance company in India, I would only focus on risk. So, and I wouldn't, term I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't basically set up this kind of a uh, setup uh, with with you know hundreds of branches and hundreds of people. You'll uh, make you it could, very you, asset light. You would uh, rather have it asset light. Focus on the risk part. Uh, our actuarial books are outdated. Our lifespan has increased dramatically. Uh, your term insurance, I think there is enough scope uh, for it to reduce substantially or even halved if their cost structure is right. Right. I think we are seeing that first sign of it where, you know, when you would go and buy a car hmm. and uh, the, the uh, showroom would basically say this is the insurance which comes and you have to take this. Yes. Uh, that has changed in the last two years. Yes. And you can go outside. Yes. The minute you go outside, hmm. The insurance comes down by 50%. Yes, the competition comes, the options are many. Exactly. And then you can... So, I hmm. think if insurance industry focuses on the risk part, yeah. by reducing the premium there, hmm. uh, that is your real profit. Yes. Because if, if hypothetically, say the person does not die, hmm. or an accident does not occur, hmm. then whatever you have paid, hmm. that's a profit for the insurance company. Yes. But if, if you have to return that back, yeah. Then it's a different ball game altogether. Yes. So I think uh, somewhere there is an overlap, hmm. unfortunately, in the Indian markets. Hmm. But uh, yeah. Is that a, because a, the two industries, mutual fund investment industry and insurance industry, have separate regulator? Could be the case. Hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I think. Or uh, if we, if we can come out with a super regulator over about these two or even over about uh, RPI. That's for the government to decide. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's a sensitive topic. Understood. Understood. Uh, Saurabh, you, as I said, you are a veteran of mutual fund industry. How you've seen mutual fund industry mature since 2002 till date, 2023? In how has it matured? What what positives you have seen in the mutual fund industry? I think the last ten years specifically, the hmm. industry uh, has worked with a focus. Uh, so you you let's look at two periods. Hmm. You had a period from 2003 to 2008 mm. where retail investors were increasing, mm. penetration was increasing. Mm. Uh, I think the maximum number of investors would have come in that 2007-8 period yes. at that point of time. Yeah. And obviously that was like a peak mm. of the market. 2003 you, to 2008 bull run. Yeah. So 2007-8 mm. if you would have had landed on, uh, at the Mumbai airport and had, would have had travelled Virtually every second billboard had a mutual fund 
wow. new fund offering or whatever. And, okay. and, and uh, uh, that was the time when you got a lot of new investors hmm. in, 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 uh, in the industry. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, you had the global financial crisis and NAVs crashed. Right. So NAVs crashed anywhere between 20% to as high as even 60%. In thematic uh, funds, in small cap in funds. In thematic funds, in, in a whole host of categories. Mm. You then had a period from 2008 to 2015 mm. where retail investors were actually leaving the mm. industry. Okay. Uh, so every time if they would have had invested in 2007 mm. and the minute their NAV would come back to par, to you would have million. the distributor basically telling him that, that investor that, you know, if you want to take it out, take it out. Okay. You have recovered your principal back okay. after the global financial crisis. So, okay. So, so even if you see the data uh, with with uh, Amfi perhaps uh, or other regulators, hmm. there wasn't much accretion to retail investing between 2008 to 15. Okay. I think uh, the good thing is, uh, and I've been part of Amfi now for 13 years. I got onto the Amfi board in 2009. Hmm. And I think industry put their heads down and took a conscious uh, sort of uh, approach that let's target retail, let's uh, you know popularize SIP, hmm. um, systematic investment plans. Hmm. I think we started off maybe 2011, 12 popularizing it. First okay. three, four years, there wasn't much traction. Okay. But again, now we are seeing this phase from 2016 to 2023, where people understand what a SIP is why we should do it. Yeah. And I think we are g deriving the benefits out of that at this point of time. Yes. So from 2016 to 2023 onwards, you have seen a huge increase in retail participation. Hmm. A long way to go. Hmm. Uh, I think the number of unique investors is yes, yet less than maybe three and a half crores, roughly. Okay. Unique uh, pans, you are uh, Unique pans. Okay. Uh, so uh, that equivalent number in, in, in countries hmm. like... Uh, uh, you know, similar population to us like China is over 25 crores. Okay. So I think uh, huge opportunity to take this number up significantly. Right. Uh, so I think industry has come a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, one other big difference was that in that period, 2002 to 2015, maybe I think debt money, uh, debt AUM was far higher. Mm -hmm. uh, institutional participation was far higher. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's now switched the other side. No, where retail, re is retail is dominating. Okay. Uh, equity is dominating, mm -hmm. uh, which is the right thing. Yes. So I think a lot of these uh, steps uh, have created a right base for us mm -hmm. uh, at this point of time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very interesting uh, presentation yesterday made by uh, Sebi chairperson, Ms. Madhvi Butch. Uh, yeah. We had our AGM yesterday in Mumbai uh, right. uh, of Amphi. Yeah. And uh, she sl just showed in two very simple slides that a strong foundation has been created. Hmm. So if the foundation is strong, hmm. then you can build a superstructure on top. Wow. And, and I think that's where the industry is headed. So Okay. So that's a very, you painted a very positive picture. Yeah. For the, so where do you see the, so we are around 44, 45 lakh crore today. Yeah, I, I think, look, that's an outcome. That's an so outcome. So, uh -huh. people keep focusing on that number. Total size um, of the industry. Uh, total size of the industry. I would rather the right look metric at is how many investors have participated. My metric would be how many investors are there. So, the three uh, crore, three and a half yeah. crore odd figure of no, unique pans and with a population of 130 odd crore. Yeah, Where do you so see I that going? So, I think the next five years, I'll be disappointed if it doesn't touch 10 CR. Right. 10 crore investors. Right. And another 10 years from there, it touches 25 crores. So, uh, 15 years uh, from today, uh, yeah. 25 crores. So, okay. uh, I think... You Still, know, we would be <laughs> underpenetrated. Yeah, but no, that, that is an ideal size because uh, what you are then saying is uh, that uh, virtually every household does have a mutual fund. Right. Uh, which it should have, right. very logically. Right. Uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, then there is, you know, participation you have in a way 90% penetration from a household perspective. Hmm. Okay. Now, if I ask you to compare mutual fund with uh, products like PMS, a portfolio management service, or an a AIF, uh, or other structured product, what are your thoughts on that? I think each one has its place. Hmm. 
mutual fund works for everybody. Everybody. Sure. So virtually right everybody. From the retail guy to an the most sophisticated. Right absolutely. I don't think you will basically uh, have a more efficient structure than the mutual fund product at this point of time. Why are you saying so? Tax. Tax efficient. Okay. Tax efficient. Mm. Um, paperless. Mm. The most convenient. Yes. Okay. Uh, no lock-ins. Easy to exit. Easy to exit. In fact, it is too easy to exit. It's just too e easy to exit. You just have to fill in three or four details and you can exit. If my clients have five different options and if they want money fast, yeah, and they just have to message me. Uh, I get my capital gain statement on on the website, uh, wherever I'm invested. Yeah. Uh, it's a very simple statement. Uh, in PMS, you will have to account for each and every stock and mm. what has happened in that, what mm. you have bought and sold because mm. it's ultimately your portfolio. Mm. Um, in an AIF, you will not have liquidity. Mm. Uh, you know, there will be a lock-in mm. at, 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 at a particular mm. level. So I, I just feel that uh, mutual fund is the simplest, mm. the most transparent. Yet, yet surface sophisticated. Yet uh, the most efficient. Most efficient. Uh, by far. Right. Uh, PMS, uh, AIF, uh, you are basically then getting into categories where you are looking for real uh, specialization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may have somebody who is really, really good in a particular theme, in a particular style of investing, uh, in a particular asset class, in a way. Uh, and uh, you need to make your right choice and mm -hmm. right selection. It can backfire. Uh, it's it a double, backfire. double edged sword. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I would want people to really look at, you know, six, seven, ten year data mm. of PMS and mutual funds mm. and see which one has been more efficient and mm. which one has been more, mm. you know, uh, which has delivered better returns on a tax adjusted basis. Conclusion? You no, know it's very clearly it. mutual funds, no doubt about it. If, so, so say, I, I mean, um, look. I have a PMS product also. Hmm. Uh, I will also be getting into EIFs yeah. and the other part uh, yeah. at some point of time. Yeah. I but think the design, it, the design uh, is is meant for sophisticated investors hmm. or investors who have already, you know, put aside eighty percent of their savings in in either mutual funds or bank fixed deposits or whatever, and then they are playing with that. Last so 10, there's 20%. this misconception, Saurabh, I keep asking this question to everybody. Let's see my my driver, uh, if I am an ultra HNI, let's say I am worth a few hundred crores, and if my driver and my maid are also investing in mutual funds, then that is not a product for me. That is a huge misconception amongst, Absolutely. Please, please throw some light on that. No, it is. There's no question it's on a that. I mean, right? yeah, why would it? Just be that? Even if you are a few hundred crores or a few thousand crores, you should still look at mutual funds. Ah, yeah. I use, a, I mean, a Colgate or a close-up toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I think my driver and my maid also would also be the same. same. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that. It, it, but it, you, you, but you would I'm agree. Eating, I'm but eating the same vegetable and I'm eating the same fruit, which I think yeah. all of us are human beings. So why yes. this differentiation? Yes. So exotic food you might eat once in a while, but then you go back to the basic food. Exactly. Even if you are a billionaire. Yeah. So I mean, they are investing maybe a smaller denomination. Hmm. I am investing a larger denomination. Hmm. Uh, why? Dif what? What's different? And in terms of returns, also we are less than none. We are more tax efficient. Expenses wise, we are we are more regulated. Mutual funds, and I think uh, a lot of it is marketed for the kick part of it. Yes. And 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 the uh, kick can uh, come both ways. Exactly. You can get a kick in an exotic product where you don't want one. Yeah, so you hit the nail on the head. It can work both ways. And that's where I yet, I mean, I'm fairly clear from the data I have that mm. I think on a post-tax basis, uh, mutual funds would have delivered far higher returns than some of far these exotic yeah. Than these exotic products. Yeah. So you see there's a trend that I've noticed. Let's say a, a traditional uh, businessman with a legacy uh, business, then he sells that business. Suddenly there are uh, these relationship managers who approach him and they are approaching him with a whole bouquet of exotic products. Yeah. Saying that, see, this is some, there's something unique here, which is not there in what you're already doing and all that. Yeah. The guy would be having anywhere between a few hundred to a few thousand crores. Absolutely. In fact, you, you can throw more light if I see the, I see the family offices mushrooming now. 
absolutely and in the family offices field it is considered almost a uh, you know an, what is the word anathema not to look at mutual funds you should start above mutual funds so look and perhaps why is it so in a way mm -hmm. uh, i can understand it enough from a family office perspective mm -hmm. because already your promoter may be having his largest wealth mm -hmm. yet in his own stock mm -hmm. or the yes. business he owns yes one stock uh, or uh, whatever 70, he 80, owns he, and he has enough assets so mm -hmm. from that stock he has carved out a small portion to be invested to be invested and he's is appointed a family office to do that yes so maybe they are looking at it point taken mm -hmm. a normal investor or even an hni investor you know shouldn't follow that i mean today if if if, 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 if if hypothetically you are basically eating a meal huh. you would eat the majority of your meal would be a chapati or a rice right right, right. Those, those are the core ingredients which is a mutual fund you which, is a, which mutual is a mutual fund, a mutual fund. exactly it's so like chapati and rice yeah but are you basically saying that i will only eat farsan and or and only uh, sweets, sweets mm. uh, you know my meal will be made up of 90% sweets and farsan and 10% of be because just uh, because is, you can afford doesn't mean you eat exotic exactly. food every day it so uh, it is there you know for a purpose mm. uh, for the sophisticated investor mm. he understands the risk mm. he has a view on that I'll, that that's where he can, goes he goes if i can uh, <laughs> intervene i'll challenge that also sir so, is there a sophisticated investor i mean i i would challenge even many family officers don't know how to compute their return outside your mutual funds is very transparent i would it, is it okay, easy so to my put, my, com my limited point is uh, hmm. uh, i think it's evolving that space is evolving quickly hmm. family officers are getting more and more sophisticated hmm. uh globally you have very sophisticated family offices we have we cater to a lot of them we have seen them uh, they they are very focused and they know what they are they are coming for mm -hmm. so you can have a family office who is basically saying that look i want private credit or i want real estate exposure because mm -hmm. i don't have that or my promoter does not have that mm -hmm. uh, and therefore we will only focus on this and you show me that which as long as that clarity is there is clear i think but doing it, will it for be the heck of doing hardy, it huh. it will be full hardy to do it, do it for the heck of it hmm. it will be full hardy to basically do it just because somebody else is doing it hmm. and it will be full hardy to do it if you don't realize you know what your asset allocation is and what you know uh, you know are you basically 70 80% secure in something else and doing this you know to 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 get that kicker hmm. uh if 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 you are not clear about that hmm. then you will have a bad outcome hmm. and isn't simplicity the highest form of sophistication in all the cases right uh people don't realize that when when you are a manager and 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 you know you rise through the ranks hmm. uh i i feel at the highest levels the simplicity is the highest you know you you basically are getting an answer in a yes or a no or this is the decision i am taking hmm. because there is years of experience behind it hmm. basis which he you know the mind has already been conditioned to work that look i have seen this cycle in the past i have gone through this experience and therefore i am taking that decision hmm. uh so you know people feel oh why why is he getting paid so i what is he doing you know think but it's it's years of experience and and years of uh training it, experience in 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 those situations to take those calls mm. and that's what you are paying them for mm. uh or that's why they are there in those positions mm. uh so i in fact feel that the higher you go the simplicity yes. increases yes uh, even more yes. in in terms of you know it's a binary outcome at yes. that point of time Thank you for listening to the AUM Finance podcast. Remember that all investments are subject to market and other risks, and one should read offer docs and other documents carefully before investing.